Welcome back to another episode of 40 Facts About the 40K Universe. I am your host, Gersh One, and you are watching One Mind Syndicate. Today we continue talking about the Imperium as we talk about the accusation of heresy. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. We post Warhammer 40K content every single day. And of course, if you have any suggestions, just comment down below. But with that said, let's talk about 40 Facts on the Commission of Heresy. The commission of heresy is often not merely the expression of an unconventional religious viewpoint, but the act of worshipping the ruinous powers of chaos, or aiding the forces of chaos in attempting to subvert the rule of the Imperium. The worship of any other god other than the Emperor is forbidden, and those who overtly turn from the Imperial Creed are punished by death, as are those who deny the authority of the Adeptus Ministorum while those men and women who turn to the worship of the forbidden gods, such as the ruinous powers or alien overlords, are the most obvious of heretics. Many other variant belief systems have been declared heretical throughout the ages. What does and does not count as heresy is generally determined by the high officers of the ecclesiarchy. Massive divisions of the Adeptus Ministorum exist to monitor and study the maraud religious sects that exist across the Imperium and determine whether they have remained within the confines of orthodoxy. The accusation of heresy is often used as a weapon by those wishing to gain power over others. This can occur at multiple levels. A reasoned debate between brother cardinals can be brought to an immediate end should one of the two hint at accusing the other of heresy. An imperial diocese that has proven tardy in the raising of tithes can be brought into line by the merest hint of the word. An accusation of heresy is a blunt tool, and one that can turn upon its wielder, for those accused might have previously unknown allies or patrons, and outright war between rival factions sometimes results. There are several variant fates within the Imperium, which the Ecclesiarchy has no choice but to tolerate, even though it disagrees fundamentally with their tenets. The cult of the Adeptus Astarte is one of them. Every Space Marine chapter is faithful to the Emperor, and its own Primarch, but they do not usually revere the Emperor as a god. Rather to them, he is but a man, albeit the greatest who has ever or will ever live. This breaks with the single most important tenet of the Imperial Creed, and has on many occasions proved a source of great tension and even overt hostility between the two Imperial Adepta. On the whole, however, the Adeptus Ministorum and the Adeptus Astartes try to maintain cordial relations for the Space Marines are the literal descendants of the Emperor through the blood of the Primarchs, which flow in their own veins 10,000 standard years after the entombment of the Master of Mankind in the Golden Throne. The Cult Mechanicus is another deviant faith which the Ecclesiarchy is often at odds. The Tech Priest of the Adeptus Mechanicus worship their own deity, who they call the Machine God. As with the Imperial Creed, Many sects exist within the Cult Mechanicus, and it is commonly held that the Machine God is in fact a manifestation of the Emperor, although many in the Ecclesiarchy have great difficulty accepting this. Other Mechanicus sects appear to outsiders to be saturated in idolatry, worshipping the very machines they are tasked with maintaining, and committing a thousand other transgressions punishable by death by the laws of the Adeptus Ministorum and the Imperium. Despite such differences, the Ecclesiarchy has no choice but to tolerate the cult Mechanicus, just as the Emperor, during the Great Crusade, had to ironically accept their deviance from the atheistic Imperial truth, for without the Tech Priest, the Imperium would literally grind to a halt. No institution can do without the Adeptus Mechanicus, just as none forego the service of the Adeptus Astra Telepathica or the navigator houses, regardless of how distasteful they might find their psychic servants. The Ecclesiarchy is especially interested in those that are not only rejecting the Emperor, but also embrace something else in his place. These slaves and servants of Xenos and warp entities are viewed as the true heretics, and their discovery and eradication is a prime goal of the Ministorum throughout the Imperium. Finding such heretics can be, however, a difficult task. Amidst the thousands of imperial cults and saints, it is easy for seemingly faithful practices to mask heretical deeds. To a certain degree, the Ministorum polices its own ranks against this corruption, but it is an impossible task keeping tabs on a cult 
that spans tens of thousands of light years and countless worlds. Even those who obviously seem to bear taint are not always guilty. Psychers and mutants, for instance, are two groups that often bear the suspicion of heresy, sometimes unfairly, sometimes not. While it would be convenient to brand all of these individuals as an affront to the Emperor and a scourge upon the Imperium, they are far too integrated into the Imperial society to purge them wholesale. As a result, the Ministorm and other Imperial forces, such as the Inquisition, must rely on investigation and intelligence gathering. Planets and their populations must be watched and monitored for signs of taint. Saints and cults could be screened and rumors of dark deeds investigated. No person is beyond the suspicion of the Inquisition, not even the great space marines of the Adeptus Astartes. Acts of heresy are categorized in legal grades, which differ based on the severity of the act. Punishments range from imprisonment, assignment to an Imperial Guard penal legion, excommunication from the rights and protection of the Ecclesiarchy, and even execution. Once an accusation is made or hints of heresy are spoken, it is often up to the Inquisition's acolytes, whom are sent to insect whether or not someone or something is heretical. However, by the time the agents of the Inquisition have become involved, there is a good chance that something foul is afoot. In any case, they must still try and identify the true heretics from the simple malcontents. It is taught that there are three stages to the identification and eradication of heresy. These are suspicion, investigation, and purging. The first stage is known as the suspicion stage, and often the only clue an acolyte has to the presence of heresy is through his instincts. The Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition both encourage investigators to follow these feelings, believing it is the will of the Emperor guiding them to his enemies. This, combined with the broad powers of a secret police organization like the Inquisition, means that few people are safe from the scrutiny when it comes to the rooting out of heretical behavior. Acolytes are taught that no one and nothing should be above their suspicion, which can lead to them becoming extremely paranoid, another virtue encouraged by the Inquisition. Once a target has been identified, the next step is to begin an investigation. In many cases, especially within the ranks of the Inquisition, the gathering of evidence is secondary to identifying guilty parties. Such clues are more to help lead the investigator to his quarry, rather than prove anything in particular once he gets there. Because it is vital the heretics be discovered and uprooted, the most important aspect of many investigations becomes stealth. Quite often, even the hint of acolytes nosing around sends cultists underground vanishing into the general populace and becoming particularly impossible to find. As a result, the Inquisition especially advocates striking against heretics as soon as possible, even when there is only the most circumstantial of evidence. In the end, any number of innocent deaths is acceptable if it means a true heretic is found and destroyed, preventing the death, corruption, or damnation of tens of millions more. Once the heresy has been unmasked, the next step is eradicating it. This can be harder than it seems, as like weeds, many heretical cults can appear to be destroyed only to spring up once more. The teachings of the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition on this matter is clear. The Emperor rewards thoroughness. If there is the slightest suspicions of involvement in the heresy, it must be purged. Sometimes the heresy has consumed an entire hive city or continent and the Ecclesiarchy cannot be so discerning as to single out an individual. At this point, the Ministorum shows no mercy and offers no quarter, leading to the destruction of entire cities or even worlds through military conflict, atomic fire, or virus bombs. Better a dead world than one that does not bow to the Emperor, or worse, serve his enemies and the enemies of all mankind. There are many key examples of heresy in the Imperium. The most notable is worshipping other gods beside the Emperor, who is the one true god of mankind, especially the Chaos Gods. Practicing witchcraft, sorcery, or making any other use of unsanctioned psychic powers. Treason or rebellion against the rightful rule of the Imperium. The usurpation of power within Imperial Adepta from the rightful agents of the Emperor, like the Horus Heresy. The use of alien technology or any other technology not approved by the Adeptus Mechanicus. 
however the mechanic is, is legally entitled to confiscate all alien technology or rediscovered archaeotech for research and development purposes. Employing warp-based weaponry and entities, such in the use of demon weapons, demon hosts, and the summoning of demons. Once convicted of heresy, the punishment is often death, but to the few imperial citizens with the power or resources to evade death, they will be marked as excommunicate traitorous. The term excommunicate traitorous is a high gothic bureaucratic designation that represents the highest form of imperial reproach against an imperial citizen, world, or organization that has committed extreme acts of heresy against the imperium of man, including mutation, rebellion against the imperial rule, and corruption by chaos. It is the ultimate form of censure. A traitor is officially banished from the imperium on pain of death and cast from the light of the benevolence of the emperor of mankind. There is no graver fate for those that serve the Imperium. When an individual or organization is declared excommunicate traitorous by either the High Lords of Terra or an Inquisitor of the Ordos of the Inquisition, the accused is struck from the records of Imperial history. Their names are deleted from the Scrolls of Honor in the Hall of Heroes in the Imperial Palace, and wiped from the memories of the Librarium Terra's databases and other Imperial archives by the deletion teams of the Administratum's Historical Revision Unit. If the accused is an individual Astarte or an entire chapter of Space Marines, the gene seeds stored from the chapter held by the Adeptus Mechanicus will be destroyed, and if any of the traitor Astartes are slain, their bodies would be incinerated so that their blood will no longer taint mankind. However, if an accused heretic confesses their sins against the Emperor, and repents their misdeeds, their deaths are quick and clean. But more often than not, the accused traitors flee for their lives, usually toward the hellstorm of the Great Warp Rift in the Segmentum Obscurus, known as the Eye of Terror. With no sanctuary to be found within the realms of man, they will be forever hunted for the rest of their lives, or executed on sight by any and all loyal servants of the Imperium, to push the envelope further. The Imperium might sign an Edict of Obliteration on someone or something with high influence found to be heretical. An Edict of Obliteration is a frequent component of major political or religious changes within the Imperium. The term encompasses the more specific destruction of images of a member of the Imperial elite after his death or overthrow. The result of an Edict of Obliteration is to have the offending individual effectively erased from Imperial history. The purpose of the Edict of Obliteration is to preserve the honor of the Emperor by removing every trace of the aforementioned persona, non grata, who damaged mankind from the life of the Imperium, as if he or she had never existed. In a galaxy-spanning empire that stresses fealty and loyalty to the Emperor, in return for advancement, acclaim, and spiritual salvation for its elites, this is perhaps one of the most severe punishments. This is especially true for those Imperial Adepta that directly serve the Emperor, such as the Ecclesiarchy and the Inquisition, and the members of the Imperial military forces, like the Space Marines and the Imperial Navy. When dealing with a massive group or even a planet, the Order of Exterminatus might be called on those deemed as heretics. The Order of Exterminatus is a death sentence for a world, a last resort for the direst of situation. It calls for the complete eradication of all life on a planet. Such a command can only come from the high ranks of the Imperium, a Space Marine Chapter Master, Lord High Admiral of the Imperial Navy, Lord Commander of the Imperium, or an Inquisitor. It is a grim measure and the orders unleashing such a catastrophic destruction are only issued when the threat is so prevalent that no other acceptable solution or redemption can be seen. It has been used to combat planetary-wide heresy, rampant, uncontrollable mutations or disease, to prevent the opening or widening of warp rifts, or when Xenos are so entrenched that the resources of the affected world are beyond salvation. And those were 40 facts on the accusation of heresy. 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Don't forget to share it with your friends. And if you want to get a little bit more lore that we didn't talk about, click on the link down in the description below that's going to take you to the wiki page or you can find more awesome lore on the accusation of uh, heresy. Um, I said we were going to do giveaways this past weekend. We have not been able to gather the resources to do that. Um, but we are doing giveaways on Facebook. So jump on over to our Facebook page. Link to that is down in the description below too. Uh, it's going to explain how you can participate and win some awesome prizes. Um, so we're doing some Facebook giveaways um, for right now, for this week. Uh, the, the regular YouTube giveaways are coming soon. I'm just trying to finish that, um, that script. But thank you guys so much for listening. If you have any suggestions, comment down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. This was Gershwin with One Mind Syndicate signing out.